Bill, can you explain to me the concept of Bitcoin as an insurance policy? There's 21 million shares of this insurance company outstanding. And every day that somebody wakes up and says, you know, I, I need some insurance in case something, you know, in, in case the government seizes all the gold like they did back in 1933. Or, in, you know, when, when Afghanistan, we pulled out of Afghanistan, um, Western Union stopped remittances. So if, if, you, if you couldn't get money, uh, and it's still hard to get money in Afghanistan, uh, you were in d serious trouble. Uh, in Lebanon, the lira has completely collapsed. Venezuela is a failed state. And yet Bitcoin uh, continues right along. That was your insurance policy against financial catastrophe of one sort or another. And what did the Fed do when the pandemic shut down all parts of, uh, or threatened to shut down all parts of the economy? The, the financial markets came unglued and the normal relationships between uh, uh, cash and bonds and securities, especially asset-backed securities, got blown apart. And the Fed had to increase the money supply by 25% to keep those things from collapsing as they did in 2008. Right. During that time, the Bitcoin network functioned perfectly. There was no run on it. There was, you know, prices went down initially until people figured out, wait a minute, we've had a tr tremendous collapse here and the Bitcoin uh, uh, blockchain is functioning without, a, without, a, without any interference at all. So I think that, that explains it, I think, in a way that many people can understand. If you want a little bit of financial insurance, then you know, buy a Bitcoin or, or a part of a Bitcoin.